Good Shepherd In the dark In the cold of the field We're watching their sheep The night When an angel of the Lord Appeared on to them They were so Yeah.
these Glory to God. Yeah, glory to God. Hey, glory to God. Amen. An angelic multitude about
I've heard about this baby boy Who's come to earth to bring us joy And I just want to sing this song to you
the cheek in a cold, dark field, just an ordinary night. But suddenly we heard a voice, the sky became so bright. An angel spoke to the man. Face on this most 
I could not put it better than Morgan did last Sunday and became a um, Facebook hit um, for her espousing the message of the cross. You know, and I made comments on there. Her dad wasn't much older than her when he wrote something for school, maybe a few years older, what you're going to be when you grow up. And he wrote the next pastor of Walk Walk of Grace, not Walk of Grace, Good News Worship Center, which is now Walk of Grace Chapel. And so I, I watched and listened to Morgan and think, well, Dad hasn't done it yet. Maybe it's going to be Morgan. <laughs> Although, part of me would rather it be Derek because I don't think i got another 20 years in me. <laughs> I just don't know. But anyway, uh, and Morgan is a little ways away yet. Christmas series, we preached um, seven lessons, two on Mary, two on Joseph, two on the shepherds, and one on the wise men. And we're just going to do a highlight here tonight for about ten minutes, what we should draw from each of those seven lessons that we went through. The first lesson began with Luke one thirty-eight, and Mary, I well, didn't begin there, but it uh, her conversation with the angel Gabriel ended here. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now in that first lesson, Mary told God, oh, Mary was told rather, that God was going to do something amazingly unusual so unusual it had never been done before and would never be done again and that he was going to use her to do it he was going to impregnate her without her having a relationship with a man never before never since it made the man of her dreams doubt her fidelity it could have risked her facing stern judgment for being pregnant without a husband. And um, the good news is God took care of her. Her response to that was, I'm your servant, Lord. Do what you want with me. Or as the verse put it this way, be it unto me according to thy word. So whatever it brings, and you don't think her mind was filled with possibilities of what could happen to her. She could lose the man of her dreams. She could be stoned to death. Uh, She, if not stoned to death, she could be uh, scrutinized, a horrible person, and shunned, not not shunned in the way we think of it, but uh, lose um, uh, the trust of others. And yet, she stared that in the face and said God whatever you want to do I'm here whatever you want to do I'm here so what should our response be in life we should live our lives as those who have found favor with God like Mary did Mary found favor with God and that's what it led to in her case much better than it appeared to have led her to initially but if we have found favor with God and we have not in the sense that Mary had Mary found once in history favor with God. But we have all found favor in God through the shed blood of His Son. God has nothing against us, and we should live our lives willing to face whatever we have to face as His children. And that's been an easy road in America's past history. I cannot guarantee you it'll be an easy road in its future history. But we must respond that way. The second lesson about Mary, And the angel said unto her in Luke one thirty, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Mary found favor with God. Oh, so was her life one of ease? 
And again, Noah found favor with God. Noah found grace uh, in the eyes of the Lord. Similar story. Uh, and what did uh, what awaited him? He built a huge boat. My wife and I are thinking of driving to Kentucky to see its replica sometime. A huge, huge ship of wood that took years to build. Uh, I used to say 97 to 120 years, but uh, I apologized when we talked in this lesson that I was wrong because um, I found a commentator who went through, you know, there had to be three married sons before it rained. That meant that it took a while from when God first uh, talked to Noah when he just had two sons. The third son wasn't even born yet. He had to grow up and get at least 16, 18. That's in today's world. You read the beat. I mean, you read all the be not the beatitudes. The uh, what do you call those <laughs> chapters of so and so begat so genealogy? You read them all in the Old Testament. People were old when they got married. Jack and Deanna just be be beginning their marriage. I tell you, some of them are a hundred, two hundred years old when they got married. So we don't know how old that third son was, but he had to be born, and he had to get old enough to take a wife before it could rain. So um, all that had to happen first. So in all probability, and it seems that all three sons helped Noah build the boat, uh, it only took 40 to 50 years to build that sucker. Just 40 or 50 years. Uh, But anyway... My point is, in the second lesson, finding favor with God doesn't always mean that everybody's going to pat you on the back and say, well done. Noah was made fun of. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He preached for however many years he preached without one single convert. He was laughed and ridiculed. That's what Mary could have been in those very shoes if the angel hadn't encouraged Joseph, go ahead and marry her. We got this. So, uh, Mar- uh, Mary's response was she furiously said yes to what God asked of her. Our response also should be whatever we see in the Word God wants from us or whatever we hear is a uh, still small voice leading us in a direction uh, that uh, we're a little concerned about. May we have the courage of Noah, the courage of Mary, to say, God, whatever you want for me is what I want to do for you. And the third lesson was about Joseph. Um, in Matthew 1, verses 18 and 19, Now the birth of Jesus Christ on this wise, when his, his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. He didn't want to embarrass her or get her in any kind of legal difficulty. So he wanted to find a way to do this very quietly. Um, The third lesson was how God sent to Joseph an angel in his dream to calm the raging storm of doubt that that was in his life. And and, uh, I'm going to tell you something. There isn't one man who's ever lived, if God had called that man to be Mary's husband, would have struggled any less than Joseph did. You just don't believe somebody when they say, oh, don't worry, it's from God. Uh, So, uh, Joseph had every right to be, uh, to doubt, and that's why God didn't rebuke him. God rather sent an angel to encourage him and tell him to not to be afraid, but to get up and marry her. His response was, he woke up and did exactly what the angel told him to do. And again, our response should be, we should always do exactly what God asks us to do through His Word in His Bible. Now, I always say through His Word, that's the most sure voice of God. But make no mistake about it, sometimes He speaks to us in still small voices. But whenever we know exactly what God wants us to do, we should do it. And uh, then in the fourth lesson, um, Noah had... I mean, rather, Joseph had four dreams. God told him four different times in a dream. Uh, first, he told him, Mary, uh, your fiance, Mary. And then he said, get out of town. Herod wants to kill the baby. 
go to Egypt. Then he said, the man who thought his life is dead moved back to Israel. And then he said, but not Judah, go to Galilee. And every time that an angel spoke to Joseph in a dream, he got up with haste and did what God told him to do. Once again, our lesson is we should always say yes to God. The fifth lesson was to the shepherds, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord, um, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be the sign you shall see the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, living or rather lying in a manger. And so what did the shepherds do? It's all about how they were shared the wonderful news of the birth of Christ, and they went to find the child. And uh, we should always seek Christ. Always, they sought it out. It was a, uh, it was an easy message for them to believe on one hand, because a sky in the middle of the night lit up like the bright of day, and filled with angels. That makes it a little easier to believe stuff. And so I think their task was uh, of faith was a little easier. In the sixth lesson, uh, they went to find. I'm about out of time, so I'll say they went to find the baby. And they found the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. And uh, their response was when God said that there's a Savior born this night in the city of David or Bethlehem. uh, When the angels left, they said, let's go. We're going to go find that baby. And uh, they, again, uh, went to find the uh, the Savior. And we should always embrace Jesus as our Savior. And it will bring rejoicing to us too. We embrace the Lord even in difficult times. We'll rejoice like the shepherds. And finally, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the, uh, of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and are come to worship him. Now, folks, I tell you, I wrote a song last year, I think, a Christmas song that I just don't remember. Uh, I got the words in my computer, but I don't remember the melody. Um, and uh, the title was You're the Star This Wise Man Falls and uh, may that always be our case the seventh lesson was um, the idea that through a miraculous star it, the wise men were led to Jesus they found the child in the house he was living in they worshipped him gave him gold, frankincense and myrrh and again if we truly find Jesus we will worship him if we never take time to worship, maybe we haven't clearly found them yet. There should always be some worship found, especially in the good times, but even in the bad, if we truly found the Savior of our souls.